Right, everybody's going to be happy and smiling, eh? Yeah, looking up at the cameras, eh? Yeah. Well, now that we have uh, signed a contract, we'll sign the contract document now. We'll sign the specification, which is part of the contract document. Uh, Mrs. Ingham, would you place your signature under the blue cross? Four years ago, we had a model to build a new preschool and hostel on our block of land at Everly Street, Redfin. Well, it's a uh, happy day, happy day, very happy. Today, June 1978, we finally signed the contract to start building that uh, new preschool. And it's, it's just really fantastic. It's not every day we sign we a half a million dollar contract, is it? Another stamp? Hmm? Never Honey goes. Shh. Come on, quiz, well, um, you know, we're sort of taking it all very quietly now. But uh, don't let that fool you, because deep down we're all that thrilled and, and we never ever thought this would come to this, you know. We've tried so hard all these years and nobody knows just how much it means to us. You know, it's, it's, it's really good. It sort of started with a group of women, and uh, they wanted to do something for their children. There's so much talk about Aboriginals are too lazy to get out of their own road, and they don't want to do anything. Well, these women thought that they they wanted to do something, and they wanted to start with their own children. How can it help the children to really go out and mix with whites when they're just brought up in a black preschool? At least they learn that that black isn't a sin. Yeah, isn't it's a colour. Yeah. And they're proud of it. Yeah. So when they go off to white school, if anything happens there, they're called black and that. They're not ashamed. That's what we do in the tribe, you know, in the Northern Territory. With your fingers, like in the yeah. cave painting. All right? Come on, mate. My you uh, people are Wabra people. They're 376 miles northwest of Alice Spring. Uh, a place called Yundamu. Okay, you start now. I got red. And then you paint there, come on. Do a do a stick man. Go around like that. See, copy me. In the tribe, you find that uh, the elders, the men, are the chief, and the women are in the background. Whereas I am, uh, I'm in the background, and uh, the urban ladies are my bosses, part of mine, because uh, I'm supporting them, because. Okay. To me, they are black, and uh, to, and also they're my brothers and sisters, and I'm learning from them, and they're learning from me, and the children are learning from me day by day. Get a yellow and put it. Uh, in Marawina, uh, we're making arrangements to have man, tribal man. people come down. At the moment, Jabananga comes down. He teaches the children all the instruments and things that the Aboriginal people used, and this is beautiful. Not only the children are learning, we're learning because we, we've lost this. And it's a beautiful thing. But by instilling it in them from, the, from a very early age, they're going to have this, keep their identity, they're going to go out into society as a beautiful, proud Aboriginal Australian. You know, if you're an Aboriginal, forget it. You know, if you're a Maori, you're accepted. If you're anything else, you're accepted. So what we do here at Marawina is we bring back that pride. My uh, grandfather said to me that the only way you can help our people in the city is to go in and support them and help them with their uh, teaching, dancing and teaching young uh, children about Aboriginal culture. And that's what I'm doing. See, look, kangaroo track. What's that on? Kangaroo. Why would he? Why would he? Why would he? Everybody do it. Quick, do this. Oh, what's this on here? Look, what's this running? Emu. No, emu, emu. Look, look, look. One of the things that we've introduced at Marawina is what we call the Marawina Readers. And what it is, it's on one side is a picture of a child and he's doing something. So the kids look at that. They recognise Kalman because Kalman's a real person. They know him. Me. 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 That you. That's you. And there's Kelly. And that says, my little sister. 
Aboriginal Overseas Study Award. What time has it got in her hand? So I took the Marawina readers over with me to the States because I was looking at uh, preschool programs, what they call Head Start programs. I mentioned a lot that about how the Aboriginal people were very spiritual, um, like protectors of the land, not owners of the land. Um, Aboriginals who lived on reserves, you know, the herded up and put on reserves and had to live under a manager and had to live on rations for a time. Um, out of sight, out of mind. And like a lot of things that I told them, they related to the American Indians and said, well, you know, that's the sort of thing that happened to our Indians. I got a lot of ideas from them because I, you know, visited a preschool on an Indian reservation and I visited another one in the big city and I visited another one in the country town. And they're all different, but they've all got the same aim. Like, you know, everybody, every preschool's got their own personality, I should say, just the same as Marowena's got its own personality here. Well, most of the mothers involved in Marowena and the women that work here have all been brought up on the missions, the same as I have. I can understand what they've been through, living on the missions, going to school, meeting hostilities in the white society in the towns, in cafes, movies, trying to go to movies. So I can really understand, and this is why as coordinator of Marowina, I understand and can help them in this, trying to draw them out. We have an ingrained fear in us of the white man. If you go into any office, any school or that, if there's white people sitting up there, well, you just withdraw straight away. By coming here to Marowina, they see it's run by Aboriginal people. They feel security straight away. And this is a very important part, not only for the parents, but for the children too. And it's here, it's not something that's just put in for their benefit, it's here because we've all been through the same thing. We've had this understanding with each other. When we first wanted to build our building on, the, on our block of land in Everly Street, Redfern, we had to go to council to get it changed, the zoning changed, so we could build the preschool there. And all the residents in the street went to the council and said they didn't want us there. You know, you build a park or something else, they didn't want us to build a, a preschool for Aboriginal children in that street. And they signed a big petition and everything else. And we had to go to a big... Oh, really? meeting at the council and they said, well, we don't want you to put a preschool there because there's a hotel around the corner and Aboriginals walk down the street drunk and... Yeah, and I don't also, know didn't they say we just wanted to start a ghetto? Just wanted to start mm -hmm. a ghetto and um, why don't we go back to where we came from? Yeah, and you Australians said that. Cheek of uh. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we're getting a beautiful new building, it's going to be much bigger than this one, we still want to keep that feeling, the warm feeling that we get when people walk into Marowena here. Well, I'd like to make a toast to the new Marowena. We fought for a long time for this and finally our dream is going to come true. Here's to Marowena. And it's just like an Aboriginal home that they walk into, so we want to keep that at the new building. But it'll still belong to Aboriginal women, so they feel free to come and go as they please and you know, use it for their children and for themselves. Ready? We've got to give... See ya. Okay.